And despite the massive rise in food prices, farmers are still struggling to make ends meet. Subsidies have more or less gone. Supermarkets are offering very tiny profit margins. And as you know, the cost of fuel has gone through the roof. So if you've got a piece of land that's not worth farming, what else can you do with it? Well, one Midlands farmer has become pretty adventurous, as Mark Oban has been to find out. The idyllic Midlands countryside. Acres of rolling fields, sheep and cattle grazing. But these days it's not all peace, quiet and tranquility. That's because rural England's getting a little bit extreme. Giant plastic balls, mountain boards, there's more to farms now than pick your own fruit. But can activities like these really make a difference to farmers' lives? And just how exciting can sports based on a farm really be? When I was younger, I think it was very interesting. Growing up on a farm is exactly what you want to do as a young child. You've got all this area to play in and, and enjoy yourself. And being involved with agriculture was also something I enjoyed very much. As I grew up, I, I kept going down that, that line of thinking it's what I wanted to do. Chris Hill grew up on a farm in Shropshire. He was always planning to go into the family business until foot and mouth took its toll. There just wasn't a job for him, so he had to find other ways of making some cash. I happened to be feeding the sheep one day down a very steep field that we have and I, I just happened to click and I said, this, this could work down here. Chris went into the extreme sport of mountain boarding and that was just the start. Soon he was offering things like off-road karting and biking. In fact, he's become so busy, it now takes up all his time. I think as I've developed the love for this side of the industry, then I haven't... You know, I haven't lost that love for the agricultural side, but I think now I've developed this new fan love, it's, it's become much more prominent and I wouldn't have it any other way. I think stepping sideways into agriculture would almost be a backward step for me because of the way we've developed a new business. And Chris isn't alone. Around one in ten farms now has a business offering things like quad biking, riding or shooting. But what's it take to run something like this? And how do you make it a success? It's midsummer, and it's one of Chris's busiest times of the year. He's hosting a leg of the National Mountain Board in Championships, and he's hoping it will help put his business on the map. It creates a huge interest, you can see, from the amount of people that are, that are gathering here today, and even the day before the competition. It's going to create interest. The more people that come here, people passing on the roadside are always going to wander in and say, oh, what's going on here? And the more interest and the more spread of the word we can get, then obviously the more, the more business we're going to have and the more income's coming in. In fact, Chris is already doing quite well, and he's now doing what every diversified business should do, putting money back into the farm. Things are contributing back the other way, so the farm's helped us build this business up, and now we're helping the farm to, to put that back in a stronger position as well. So yeah. where do I see us going? Well, I see us getting bigger and stronger and better, hopefully. That's where I want to be. But come on, we're on a farm, aren't we? How extreme can it really be? Mike Payne designed this track. He's also one of the country's top mountain boarders. Who better to show me how it's done? OK, Mike, so I'm here. I need to know the principles of mountain boarding. Oh, I don't like the idea of the feet being strapped in no. on these. So you to bend your knees? Yeah. OK, that all seems pretty simple. Yeah. But there's just one thing that's bothering me. How do I stop? And back to the walking up the hill again. Perfect. Woo! Now that's a lot harder than it looks. And the excitement when you come down the hill and the speed and you have the whistling through the helmet in your ears. I'm definitely going to be coming back to this place to complete this sport with some of my friends. Now I know why this sort of thing's so popular. It seems to be working out for Chris, but what about other Midlands farmers? Well, there are actually fewer diversified farm businesses here than anywhere else in the country. Like mountain boarding, 
Running something like this isn't as easy as it looks. Traditionally, uh, we're looking at one in six will fail. And not necessarily fail because it was a bad idea, but fail because it can't be integrated within the existing business, so it doesn't meet the financial expectations that, that people had of it. Or purely and simply, you know, it was a good idea, but it's in the wrong place. One thing they've got to bear in mind is that as soon as they've built the first business, they've got to start looking for new ideas to add to it. It's never static. It's not like farming where uh, many people have been in sheep for generations. Therefore, they know how to keep sheep and they keep sheep and they're pretty much the same as the sheep their grandfather kept. When a diversified enterprise comes along, you've constantly got to think about adding something to it. And that's something Chris is trying to do. We're off to take a look at what he thinks could be the next big thing in extreme sports. We're off to the sphere. Oh, right, OK, that's interesting. Yeah, it's a little bit different. It's something I've been thinking of looking at for some time. It's a yeah. great big rubber ball, and they throw people or strap people inside it yeah. and just push it off down the hill. Now, rolling down hills in a giant ball isn't something I ever thought I'd find myself doing. But there seems to be plenty of volunteers, and some of them even want to get wet doing it. We're going to have to wait our turn, but that'll give Chris chance to find out about the business side of things. And how long, how long have you been going for now? This is two years now we've been running this right. site. Does it keep you busy? Very busy. Yeah, Saturdays and Sundays non-stop. What about the weeks? Are they uh... Uh, weeks? We sometimes run on a Friday for this cool bank holidays we run. Okay, and it's one after another all weekend. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> Sounds promising, but there's nothing like having a go yourself. <laughs> that was a bit smoother than me. No, no, it really wasn't. I had about <laughs> four jumps there. I feel like I'm in a very oh. awkward position. <laughs> <laughs> I feel as I'm totally spaced out. I don't know whether it, which way's up and down at the moment. But yeah. It, yeah, it was fantastic. Really enjoyed it. It was longer than I thought it was going to be because when you look at the hill, it doesn't look very long. It's and we go down, yeah, I was well. I'm all so over busy the place. at the moment. God, but I mean, can you see yourself doing this on your farm? Yeah, I'd love to. I think it, people are smiling, coming back up there, looking as though yeah. they really enjoyed themselves. I think that's the key. If people love yeah. it, then, then you've got yourself a clientele. So, sphering may be one for the future, but what about the mountain boarding? Well, the race back at Chris's place is in full swing, but the weather doesn't look too good. That's it. The rain's beaten everyone. While it might be good for farming, it's not the best for mountain boarding. But Chris isn't going to let it dampen his spirits. For him, this is just the start of bigger things to come. We have the facility, we have the field. We need to look at what else we can put in place to attract people to it. Mark Hoban trying a couple of the advanced...